Rightmove is a phenomenal tool for property investors, but most people only use a fraction of its potential. After using it far more than I should for well over 15 years, there are six tricks that I've started using to help me find the right properties before anyone else in a fraction of the time, and they can do the same for you. By the way, most of this also applies to Zoopla, and I don't believe one is better than the other. I just default to Rightmove out of habit. Okay, so the first thing is setting up alerts. So for any search you perform, you can save it and then create an alert. And to get that first mover advantage, you wanna set them up to be sent either daily or instantly. That in itself is pretty basic stuff, but a lot of people set up these searches too broadly, meaning that they get overwhelmed by the volume of emails and stop paying attention to them. If you do that, you're basically just spamming yourself. So the first thing to do before setting up your alert is to use all of the available filters to make the search as precise as possible, which does, by the way, mean knowing what you're looking for in the first place, which is often the tricky bit. Even after doing this though, you can still end up with irrelevant properties in your results, which is why by adding the next step, I know that everything that hits my inbox will meet my criteria and be worthy of further investigation. And that's why something I always do before setting up an alert is to draw my search area. So by default, you put in a postcode and then you can search within a certain radius of that postcode. But that's just not how most areas of interest work. When you know an area well, you'll often find situations like you're interested in properties towards the east of the station, but not the west or there'll be a particular road that has got a good end and a bad end. And of course you can kind of try to hack around it and find a postcode which gives you the right radius, but it's far more powerful to use Rightmove's feature that allow you to draw your own search area. If you do that, then you can set it up perfectly so only properties that are in your strict area of interest are going to be included. If you pair this with the right filters around property type and price, then everything you see will be relevant, which overcomes the challenge of being overwhelmed by alerts. A third trick that served me well for years is to set up alerts for properties I already own, because it's important to keep an eye on markets that you've already bought in, and this is a really easy way to do it. I set up both rental alerts and sales alerts, and I set them either to the exact postcode or a very tightly drawn area, so I can passively monitor hyper-specific local trends. These alerts I set up to be sent weekly because they're informational rather than anything I'm gonna act on quickly, so there's no point clogging up my inbox with them. If you wanna take this to the next level, if you're using an assistant, you can have these alerts go to them and they can start building up a spreadsheet of trends and comparables that you can make use of when you next review the rent or update the value of your portfolio. The next thing I use Rightmove for all the time is to use the sold house prices section because you can find data about previous sales on the land registry and many other places. But I like doing it on Rightmove because often if it's been listed on there before, it'll be enriched with photos, floor plans, and the details of past listings. So if the property has changed hands or been listed for rent in recent years, there'll normally be additional information on there that's useful to you. And it's useful because it gives you more context. Often, say, three bedroom houses on the same street are not the same. They can differ significantly in size and layout. And of course, they can differ in condition as well. So if you see a property being sold for £140,000, was that in move-in ready condition or was it a wreck? You couldn't tell unless you had the photos on there as well. So having those visuals makes it much easier to get a sense for pricing in an area and make sure that you're always comparing like with like. Next is a feature that not many people know about, even though it's hiding in plain sight at the top of every page of listings, which is the keyword filter. It says prioritize properties with. So this doesn't exclude results that don't meet your criteria, but it does mean that if properties have certain keywords in their descriptions, then they get brought to the top. So for example, you could use modernization and acre if you wanted to look for properties with development potential, or you can include a feature that you know you want, like a balcony or a garage. It's far from perfect, but it does help and it's worth a try. Zoopla's keyword search, by the way, works in the same way, but I think it's better. So on Rightmove, of course, you can see the asking price of a property, but wouldn't it be great to see when a property has been reduced in price? Well, you can with browser extensions for the Chrome browser, either Property Tracker or Property Log are the ones that I've used. These expose the price history when you go onto a listing, giving you a bit of a picture about how motivated the seller may be and a way to catch out agents talking about how much interest they've had. If a price is just reduced, that's probably not true. 
So by using a combination of these methods, the wrong properties will filter themselves out and the right ones will drop into your lap. But this is no good unless you know how to then analyze these deals to make sure that the property that looks perfect on paper or on screen actually stacks up as an investment. So watch this video next, where we share a free spreadsheet that you can use to run any deal through to make sure it's a winner. And we'll also talk you through exactly how to use it.